music, sharing through conversation, sharing through reflection, and sharing through silence. Thanks so much for coming, and uh, it's great to see a bunch of you here. And we really hope that you have a, a, a really uh, inspirational, I think is a good word, for the next couple of hours. Next, we're going to try and make it an hour and 20 minutes. So, um, Thank you, Stephen, uh, Reverend Stephen, De Dean, the Dean of uh, St. Anne's. It's brilliant to have such a beautiful space. And without further ado, I would like to introduce uh, Jude Hill Mitchell, who's going to be the MC tonight. She's got uh, a brilliant, she's a brilliant, warm-hearted communicator and journalist. And can we give her a big round of applause? We know there are conversations in this society that we need to have, and some of you in this room are involved in the hard graft of reconciliation. But there are also these gorgeous stories of light and breakthrough, and tonight we want to eliminate those and really amplify those. And I guess the gloom doesn't seem so overwhelming when together we can point out some light. Carry on. disappeared. He was 32 years old. He'd been living in Paris. I was teaching there. And um, in 1985, um, we heard nothing from Seamus. And uh, after a few months, we discovered that he'd actually disappeared. But um, we had to soldier on. I always hoped that Seamus was going to be alive, right up until I saw a hearse with his cough in it, when all my hope left me because I always hoped he was going to be coming back to me. Some people may say, what an awful tragedy, but for the families of the disappeared, we were able to join together in 2000 and support each other with the help of a wave. Until this point, it was a very lonely journey, but once we got to wave, we were not alone. Other families were involved. After 15 years of silence, we were now with people who we could talk to and trust in a safe environment. Came to my home was in 
November 1983, and it was a very, very bizarre occasion because the bomber detonated, this bomb detonated, and it blew him up. And my mother sent me out to put a pillow under his head, which I did. And it was, I mean, it was something when I look back on. I'm sorry I did it because it still uh, haunts me, and uh, that's you know 40 years. Uh, That's 40 years later. And he looked up at me and he said, Mister, don't kill me. So I am looking down at this 19 year old uh, with no arm, no leg, and half his face blew off. And he looked up and he said, don't, Mister, Mister, don't kill me. And I said, Don't be worrying, son, I'm not going to kill you. We're going to get you to the hospital. And he went to hospital and he survived and he, he lived until 2003. Um, I thought that investment. That act of love, that act of kindness would get us off the hook. But then, it was the following April, April the 12th, um, the bombers returned and they plant, planted a bomb at the front of our home and it killed my mother, who was 53, and a young policeman called Michael Dawson from the Branyal Estate. And ever since that, I suppose November 83, and ever since that occasion, I, my attitude the things have, have slightly changed. I didn't ask to be born into a society of war. I do not believe that people are born to hate. If you can create conditions of hate, you can create conditions of love. Look what you witnessed here tonight. Look what you witnessed from people who probably never knew where Ireland or Northern Ireland was. So that's essentially my story. Thinking about peace tonight, can I ask you what peace means to you personally? Well, peace, as, as a Muslim, I believe peace is, uh, you know, Islam is the word Islam. It means submission and peace. It's from peace. And salam, peace literally in Arabic is salam. Salam is one of the names of God. God in Arabic has 99 names. One of them is salam. And people call their children servant of salam, as they call Abdullah. Abdullah, it means servant of Allah, of God. And peace cannot be established without justice. And justice has to be established, then peace will follow. And forgiveness will follow as well. But unfortunately, today we live in, many, in, in a world where justice is not being established. I might, uh, we are here in the United Nations uh, Peace International Day or whatever it's called. So United Nations. The United Nations is not built on justice. Because there are five countries who have the power. The rest of the world won't have the power. If the whole world decides something, all the countries decide something, and one of these five countries says no, Russia says no, United States says no, it's no. So we have to, even the United Nations, I don't know, obviously I don't have my voice, cannot be heard there, but I hope this will be a re uh, structure. 
the structure of the United Nations to establish justice in that international organization so we can spread justice over the world so everybody will be equal. Thank you, sir. Please. So now I'm going to read to you uh, an extract from the conclusion of a book written by His Holiness the Dalai Lama called Toward a True Kinship of Faiths. Um, and it's the sort of thing that I, I hope will find useful. So, in the course of this book, a certain matter of a central matter of concern has been the peaceful coexistence among people and their religions. None of us can any longer remain secure behind the walls and narrow confines of our specific culture and faith. Today, the world we live in has become a very small place. In the face of this, we might throw up our arms at the complications. Yet, as our world gets ever more complex and interconnected at all levels, the solution to its problems may be found somewhere very simple. Indeed, what could be more simple or more sustaining than to return to our basic human quality of empathy and a good heart? So we've heard much about peace this evening from the different perspectives. And peace in some traditions, not least the Judeo-Christian tradition, is understood as a journey towards mutual well-being, healing and wholeness, supported by caring and just relationships for individuals and communities. There are many words we can use, and we've used many words this evening, but now is an opportunity for us to reflect more quietly when words can't adequately express what we feel and what we're trying to say. So we want to offer a time of quieter reflection with fewer words, giving space for those of all beliefs, all faiths, all backgrounds to focus in their own way.